Welcome to the Brand Theory Podcast, the podcast for helping you uncover your passion, realize your purpose, and take the aligned action. Together, we're going to prove the theory that when we live our lives on brand, the possibilities become limitless. I'm your host, Danielle Marchesi, branding expert and business coach. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Brand Theory Podcast. Today, we have an extremely special guest. She's very high profile. You've probably seen her all over my Instagram. She is my mom. Welcome to the podcast, mom. Thank you. Thanks for (laughs) finally inviting me. Finally, we're only like four episodes in. Well, you know, you're always sneaking up on me with those pictures. <laughs> okay, tell the truth. Do you actually like being on my Instagram? Like, you, you act like you're annoyed and you get pissed off, but I feel like you actually like it. Well, I'm always in a hoodie. <laughs> and you don't want people to think that's like And my hair's not done. And you sneak up on me and you surprise me and I always have a silly face But I'm on. trying to get your authentic reaction. We're all about authenticity here. Well, Okay. So you like it. You want me to keep doing it? I love it. I love it. Come on. I want some more time. I feel like you, my audience loves you more than they love me. Well, I don't know about that. They just I mean, like to see, you know, my reactions <laughs> to your foolishness. Foolishness. And by okay. the way, she's okay, been bye. doing this since she was a toddler, surprising me. <laughs> surprising you? Yeah. The second you put a camera in my hand, that's it. Yeah, which was very early. Mm-hmm. That little Fisher-Price camera. <laughs> I actually used to ask for a video camera a couple of times, right? For Christmas yes, I think when I was just cleaning out, I think I you just found, found one. one and I saved it for you. I wonder if just it still has case. the SD cards in it. We'll have to Probably. see what's on there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I saved you all the cords, too. Great. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to be talking a lot about this bond that we have together because, <clears throat> excuse me, we get a lot of comments about, wow, it is so nice that you're so close with your mom. But it hasn't always been like that. And we're going to talk about how the relationship has changed after I started the business. And I also got a lot of questions of, I'm scared to tell my mom or my parents or loved ones that I'm going to start a business and I'm going to take this on full time. So we're going to talk a little bit how we navigated that a little bit. Um, Mom, any questions so far? Are you doing okay? No, I think I was there during the navigation. (laughs) Guy now. (laughs) So one of the biggest reasons I was nervous to tell you that I was starting a business was I know I was a very big project person. I was moving to career, to career, to career. And if you didn't hear that story in episode two, I kind of tell a little bit of that background. So to come to you knowing that this was going to be it and I was going to take this on full time, I was just nervous. And I know we have a little bit of different opinions on money and what should be saved and what shouldn't and when we should be spending money. So I was just I was just nervous. And I know a lot of people struggle with that as well. Um, But now that I've been in the real world for a bit here and I've learned so much about myself, I understand things completely differently. And I find that I value your opinion way more than I have in the past. But I want you to know I was always listening to you. Every time we had an argument about money or about anything in general, I was always listening. Even though I was moody and I was a little bit of a bitch, let's say. (laughs) Don't roll your eyes at me. I was always listening. I absolutely could not get to where I am without you. So thank you. You're very welcome. (laughs) I'm very proud of you. Are you? Tell me more about why you're proud of me. I am. Because you really grew in the last couple years. You went from not knowing what you wanted to do to secretly knowing what you wanted (laughs) to do and implementing that. And I'm very proud of that. Thanks, Mom. Once you explained it to me, then I was on board and that's and was supportive. Yeah, and that's a lot of the times what I tell my clients or just people who reach out to me for advice around the subject is it's kind of our job to teach you about it, to teach people who don't necessarily have the understanding because this industry didn't exist 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or even when you guys were getting into the workforce. It wasn't an option. So it's something completely new, and I feel like a lot of that fear that comes from our parents around it is from a, lot, a place of a lack of understanding. Right, right. So I come from a place where you get a job that has benefits, you get a steady paycheck, you go to work, nine to five, whatever it might be, and you come home and that's it. So to, to un- try to understand this realm was difficult at first, but I see how happy you are mm. and that makes me happy. 
Okay, so tell people a little bit about what you do and your background right now, because they really only know you on the Instagram as my mom and somebody who sends me great care packages, somebody I sneak up on, and somebody who sends me really cool gifts, which I didn't even know that's, you knew how to do that. Do you know what a GIF is? Yes. What is a GIF? It's a picture. A moving picture. Okay, yeah. just, I just didn't know if you knew the vocabulary behind what you were Come doing. Come on, give me a little credit. <laughs> I ask my young friends at work. Oh, do you? <laughs> okay, so tell us what you do. Well, right now, I work for a hospital system mm -hmm. in the physician contracting arena, which to Danielle sounds like death. <laughs> <laughs> Reading and creating contracts. Yeah, but you're the perfect person to edit my contracts for me. <laughs> uh, my background is always in health. Like, the administration of health. So a lot of health care, insurance, all that kind of stuff. Health care, health insurance, workers' comp, that arena. Again, death to Danielle. <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> saying that. Do you enjoy your job? I love my job. In fact, let me tell you a little story. Oh, gosh. <laughs> when I took Danielle to work as a little girl... She ran away from me. She ran into the giant mail room, and I had to go chasing after her. And everybody thought she was so cute. That, that, I was. It was adorable. Yeah, with her little mop hair. Yeah, people were obsessed with my hair. Yeah. So I. So then when she, I took her to take your children to work day, and I took her to my office slash cubicle, she looked at it, and she said, and I'm not kidding you, this is like death. I said that. <laughs> yeah. Working in an office is like death. How old was I? Like eight. Wow. So she was not destined for the office world. She was destined for creativity. Did you know then that I wouldn't? Yes. Ever... <laughs> I never knew this. This is great. It's great. Why do you think I was always pushing you towards the creative side? What, what do you mean pushing me? You made me play sports all my life. Well, that's creative. Mm. To get around your defense. Mm. Yeah, I was always one of those kids who secretly wanted to be in the musical theater and do all that. But, but I was, she wouldn't do it. I was so scared. So scared. Because it was something I never did before. And then I got this idea in my head that I was too old to go out for stuff like that. And oh, please. I just stick to what I know, which was the sports. And, well, I did dance. Dance was creative. I danced till I was like 26, 25. Yeah, do they know you're a dancer? I don't know. She dances everywhere. She dances in the <laughs> kitchen. She dances in the living room. She dances waiting in line. Her yeah. feet are always going. I just, I don't know. I just feel the music. But I was... She does feel music. I, um, what do you call that? Like, and she memorizes lyrics the first time she hears a song. <laughs> yeah, it was always pretty musical. Pretty musical. Well, self-taught guitar, self-taught oh, keyboard. Oh, please. I know four chords. Let's not get crazy here. You entertain me. Yeah, that's why you love when I come home so much. I do. She dances while she's washing the dishes. <laughs> okay. Can you describe what I do? Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Let me check my notes. <laughs> no, seriously. Well, right now, you're a branding coach. Wow. And what does a branding coach do? Well... You help people get their brand out there by helping them with logos, helping them with the marketing, helping them get out there on social media, actually helping them have confidence in themselves. Their product is great. They just need to move it to the next level. Yeah. How do I know this? I don't know. How do you know this? You stalk me? I stalk you. No, because... My friends stalk you. <laughs> yeah, her friends always stalk me. It's because I am pretty open about teaching you things. And I tell you... You are. I tell you... You like, share. I share. Yeah. Where I didn't always share. Because I was fearful of just... I think also, too, I had a lack of confidence in myself. Like, I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing when I I did. <laughs> even though right. I was learning more and more every day. But even this morning, I got a message from my client. And I just answered it really quick. And I ran to the living room and I was like, mom, Dancing. I'm so good at she what I do. She danced to the living room. <laughs> I am so good at what I do. 
And it's just, and then I, I sort of explained the, the situation. Don't worry, my clients are not talking a lot about you to my mom. But it, it was just because she was like, what do you mean? And I was trying to explain the situation. So I felt like the more I shared in the beginning, the more you were learning about it, the more I was growing my own confidence, and the more you were able to understand and feel more comfortable with this new path of mine. Right. I think the new path is giving you what you always wanted. Yeah. Which was creativity and freedom. Yeah. But how did you feel when I came to you and said, I'm going to start this business? I was hesitant, to say the least. But the more you told me about it, the more I understood. And I just reassured you that if things did not work out, you'd always find a job somewhere. You have a lot of skills. You have a lot of background. And you could always rely on me to support you. Yeah. Which, going back, when you were saying you could always get a job that doesn't work out, to me, this is a job. That, well, yes, this is a job, 100%. doesn't feel like a job. But that was like, in my own head, because of my own things that were going on, my own lack of confidence, that felt like, I don't want you to get mad, like you didn't believe in me. Like you didn't feel like it was going to work out, which I know it's not what you thought. Now I know that, but in there, I didn't want you to tell me like you could always get a job. Because that was us assuming that it wasn't going to work out. Okay. Understood. <laughs> okay. Understood. I'm just telling you that's what's going on in my, that was what was going on in my head. And again, yeah, I, I get that. It goes back to just not really like the fear of the unknown of my own self. And I just needed you to tell me. No, I needed you to tell me what you told me. Like it would be okay no matter what. It would be okay. Yeah. You have a lot of skills. Yeah. You're good at doing toilets. You're good. <laughs> I used to have to clean toilets sometimes in my own job. <laughs> okay, here's a big question. I remember the day I came to you and told you I was thinking about investing in my business coach. That was... <laughs> that was kind of an argument. That was kind of an argument. We were in the nail salon. Remember? Yes. And I said, I found this, this person online, mm -hmm. and she helps people build their businesses. Because I had tried to do it on my own for a little while, and it just... Wasn't part -time. working part-time, and I just, I guess I wanted it quicker, and I need, really needed some guidance. So I told her, and what was your reaction? Well, I'm a skeptic. Yeah, always. I'm a skeptic by heart. You have to, you have to gain my trust. Mm -hmm. I don't trust a lot of people. Yeah, I'm not don't. sure why I'm like that, but... I'll have to talk about that someday. <laughs> it takes me a long time. So when you find a coach on the... On the web. On the web... That's skeptical to me. Mm -hmm. And then I distinctly remember telling you, you don't need a coach, you have me. <laughs> but excellent decision. Mm -hmm. Could have never coached you through this. Yeah. Well, it's just, again, you it's just don't different understand. Business. Yeah. Right. Right. But you love my coach now. I do love your coach. <laughs> and that was another thing that every time I would get off a call with my coach, I would go and tell my mom, oh, this is what we worked on today. And just help her understand it. Help me understand it. Help me understand what we were working on a little bit better. Was that a conscious decision? To tell you? Yes. Probably. I, yeah. I guess so. Okay. I think, I, I too, I was just excited about it. And I just wanted to share with my, like, immediate circle. Even though I was scared to tell other people, I felt like you were in my corner and you were, I mean, I lived with you. So. Yes. You saw me working from 6 a.m. to 12 a.m. every day, so <laughs> you were wondering what I was doing. But Behind closed doors. Behind closed doors, yeah. I would tell you when I was ready, but... There um, would be a few times she would say, what's for dinner? Yeah. I would, I would get up at 6 a.m., Yes. work until 10, mm -hmm. go to work, come back around 7, stressed, Very hungry. stressed. Very stressed. <laughs> hungry. And we, by the way, it was never the right dinner. <laughs> Mom. This again... This I just, again. you know, when you just get in the mood for something, you just well, wanna... yeah, you have to tell me what the mood is. I mean, I you're just supposed to know. I would text you and you would not answer. Because I was busy at work. Well, I was busy in the kitchen. Mm. Mm. Anyway, and then I would work again after dinner. Yes. Till my eyes closed. Right. Till I fell asleep. And wake up crabby again in the morning. Because I wasn't sleeping. But I, I was so motivated to 
make this a thing. There you go. So okay. in the end, the coach, the coach other than mom was a good decision. Was the best decision. But can you talk a little bit about money investments in general? How do you feel about investing in yourself? Go ahead. So typically, I'm not one to invest in myself. Right. Right. Like for me, getting my nails done is a big deal. Is a luxury. Yeah. Right. I just do everything for myself. I just rely on myself as my biggest. I can just do it myself. You can just do it yourself. Yeah. So. Yeah, it took you forever to get a lawn service. Right. You were cutting the lawn by yourself on a ride mower for. And what's the problem hours? with that? I don't know. I just feel like. You always came in tired and exhausted and dirty and <laughs> you could afford to get a lawn service. So I never understood why you didn't. Because it's the satisfaction of doing it yourself. Mm. But wouldn't you feel satisfied if you're rested or you could go for your walk or you could go see your mom while your lawn's getting taken care of? I don't know. I was just brought up that you just do it yourself. Yeah, so was I. Yeah, well, do it yourself, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> But anyway, so you never were one to invest in yourself. No, definitely not. But like you, you always take good care of your hair. You always invest like in, in certain things. So is it a yeah, certain... Yeah, my hair is my luxury. So is it a certain price point that you won't go above for yourself? No, it's just the uh, task. It's the just task. the task. Like if I could do it myself, I'd do it myself. Hmm. It's just the way, the way I live my life. Okay, well, it's not necessarily a bad thing. No, but I have to be convinced that it's okay to have somebody else do it. Yeah. Hmm. I do. Like, you've seen me do, like, plumbing projects and <laughs> carpentry projects. Yeah. And it's I mean, also, I too, though. Up. I mean, I know how to do most of those things. Yeah. Which is a good quality to have. I mean, I know how to do it because you taught me how to do it. Right. Two women living in a house for 15 years, you figure things out. You figure things out because you have to. And yeah. You, you hire someone when you have to. Yeah. You have to. And I can see that to a degree. Yes. But I also see investing in yourself or someone or a service or something in order to kind of take care of yourself, to put your energy back into showing up for yourself or whatever else you're doing at a higher level. Does that make sense? It makes sense. But you're just not going to do it. What do you, what do you want me to invest in? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but like, like your vacations. Like I always know that oh, you okay. go for like the medium package. When I know, girl, you can afford that big package. Listen, I'm a timeshare owner now. I go on nice vacations. Mm. Because I have a fiancé who likes nice vacations. Mm. Oh, so it's only for him? Yes. Mom, you have to do it for yourself. <laughs> I'm just the passenger. You always put everyone else first. It's your time. It's a mom thing. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be like that as a mom. I'm still going to do my thing. Ugh. Why? Because I'm going to do things for you? <laughs> yeah, you're going to be living in my pool house. I'm going to be mowing your lawn. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be mowing my lawn. Listen, I start very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you're making noise outside with the lawnmower like you used to. <laughs> you rode right past my window. Yeah, that was terrible. Terrible. Anyway, have you ever thought about starting your own business? No. Why? I don't have a business coach. <laughs> I told you so many times I would be your business coach. But what would be my business? I think, I mean, I want to hire you and we sort of started to do copy editing. Hire. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> you can do, I feel like you're really good at administrative administrative work, keeping things organized. I am. You could be some, some kind of like virtual assistant. You would just need to learn how to, the lingo. The lingo? I'm good with lingo. I think you're just good at keeping Instagram. things organized. I feel like you could help and advise people on finances too. Like, oh, I don't think so. You know what I think you're good at? You're con connecting things, connecting people. So if I say, hey, mom, I really need to go see this doctor. Hey, mom, I really need to go I am take care of my, I feel like you could be that person to do the research. Like you could just, I feel like you could just manage my business for me. Thanks. You're hired. Okay. When do I start? Because I'm very close to retirement. <laughs> you are. Do, would you want to take that on as a retirement job? A retirement job. What, what are the like, benefits? 
Um, for the pleasure of 401k, mm -hmm. health insurance, mm -mm. vacation time. Vacation time, you can work from your beach house. You can work 10 to 15 hours a week. Oh, I thought you were going to say a day. No, girl, you're retired. 10 to 15 hours a week. Sound hmm. good? You set me up with a Mac? Yeah, I'll set you up with a Mac. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> you have to wait a few years. Three years? Hmm, maybe longer. What? No. Blech. Are you excited to retire? I am. I need a hobby. Maybe I could cut lawns. Yeah, Fun time. you could cut lawns. <laughs> How do you feel the business has changed our relationship? Well, you you share a lot more. I think you went through that phase, like every person goes through, where they don't want to talk to their parents. So mm -hmm. it made it difficult. Made it difficult for me to understand what was going on. Just wanted to help. Yeah. I think we're more friends now versus mom and daughter. Yeah. Well, I still need you as my mom, but yeah, I, I agree. I like you as my friend now, too. Yeah, I like you as my friend. Oh, too. great. Didn't, cool. didn't, didn't always like you as my friend. I lied. I only always like you as my friend. <laughs> I think, you know, when I didn't want to talk to you as much, I was just, I didn't know it then, but I was really just trying to figure out who I was. Who are you? I'm Danielle Marquesi, your brand new expert and business coach. <laughs> But you know what I mean? I just I, I just needed that space, and I don't think I needed that right. time. Right. Space was hard because we were living in the same house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But here we are. Best friends forever. Definitely. Thank you, Square. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a piece of advice for other parents whose kids come to them saying, hey, I'm going to start a business, what would you say? Just listen. Hmm. listen what I was trying to do was draw you out like draw out information and in the beginning it was difficult because I don't think you even knew yeah I didn't know and I got very defensive yeah you got defensive but who was your best supporter you yeah who was your best supporter as you approached your family you <laughs> okay I, what did I always tell you just trust me yeah just trust me. Well, maybe I got that hard to trust thing from you. I would say. No, I trust people a little more than you do. Yeah, I'm, I'm bad. <laughs> We're going to have to really dive into that one day. Why? It's a good thing. You have to earn my trust. Yeah, but you're still, people think you're like unapproachable I know. sometimes, but you're not. You're I know. Being wishful. It's a problem. It's not a problem. We just. Is there a coach for that? <laughs> I'm sure there is. <laughs> Okay, so now I thought it'd be fun to have you try to define some industry terms. I know you've heard me say these things a bunch of times, oh my but let's just really try to define these here. Okay. All right. Is this like the pyramid game? Do I get money? Uh, you know, no. <laughs> you just get the satisfaction. <laughs> Do I get a trip? <laughs> you, really? You're really trying to milk it. Okay, ready? Manifest. Manifest <laughs> sounds like that TV show you watch. <laughs> Any guesses? Manifest is like feeling it. You gotta feel it. You gotta manifest good vibes in order to get the results. Yes. Like so, in order to get the big goal, the five K one. Yeah, you have to physically feel it first. Right. Okay. Good enough. Um. So what? That's half a trip. That's like half. A, you, you like get. Like get a luggage. Luggage. <laughs> up level. Up level? I think that means the next level of a business. Sure. Yeah. Like next level of success, both in your life and your business. Okay. Okay. Woo woo. No clue. <laughs> woo woo. Like woo! <laughs> woo! It's like when like a lot of people in the industry are very spiritual connected. So we'll say, oh, that's too woo-woo for me. Or like, oh, we're, it's a little bit woo-woo, but just give it a chance. Is that like foo-foo? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. Okay, mastermind. Mastermind is like the mad scientist. <laughs> mastermind is a group. 
Yeah, what do, what do they do? A group of sharing ideas and creative um, journeys and um, you know, personal, yeah. personal growth. It's yeah. like your uh, networking group. Yeah, good job. Good job. Mailchimp. What? <laughs> If you had to guess, what is it? What is the word? Mailchimp. A chimpanzee that delivers your mail? I don't know. <laughs> it's an email marketing system. Never even heard of it. Yeah, that's that's what I use. Is that about. like Survey Monkey? Uh, like like sort of Survey like they're, Monkey. <laughs> like they're they're not connected, but their little logo guy is a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> um, sales funnel. A sales funnel. Let's see. I think that might be, I'm not sure. It's just kind of how you can build systems in your business to take your customers through a free offer, a low offer, a higher offer, and to your highest paid offer. Deluxe. Deluxe. Mindset. Mindset? Well, that's your overall, um, that's your overall mindset towards your business or your personal growth yeah yeah do you do any mindset work mindset yeah i just get it done mm. i'm a i'm a grueler i just work it till it's done yeah we've been trying to work on that with you why who's this we just me and you oh i just think there's always room for personal growth. Danny thinks I work too hard. Uh, you do work way too hard. You've been working until like nine. I mean, I guess it's just what's going on right now. You work in a hospital, but you always work too hard. Well, kind of relax, bro. Relax. Just chill out. You always want like dinner and stuff. Mom, I don't even live here. So when I'm here, yeah, oh. of course I expect dinner. Oh. Dinner. I expect a fresh sauce. Fresh sauce? I don't even know how to make sauce anymore. Oh, oh, please, don't give me that. Your meatballs are phenomenal. My meatballs fell apart last time because I was rushing. Well, don't rush. Don't work so hard. Stop cutting the lawn. <laughs> now i got to pull weeds. One, one more question. Authenticity. Authenticity? I'm authentic. Yeah, you I'm are. I'm the real deal. You're the real deal. You don't hold back. That's a problem also. No, it's not. It is. I'm too truthful sometimes. No. You, you approach My delivery. it. My delivery is very I harsh like, I think your delivery has improved. Improved? Yeah. With age? I'm yeah. mellowing with age? Yeah. Mm. You're hitting that senior citizen status. I take advantage of those discounts yes, whenever do. I can. Yes, you do. And sometimes I even... With your coupons. Fib on my age. Mom. <laughs> that's not being authentic. No, it's not. But that's okay. We, were, we still love you. Who's we? <laughs> All of us. The community. <laughs> Any last words of advice you want to leave us with? Keep doing what you're doing. One thing I admire about you is you're constantly changing. Mm. You're very flexible. Didn't well, you wasn't always like that. No, you weren't always flexible. In fact, you were rigid. Yeah. Which was probably one of the most frustrating things for me. Mm. But... Um, I'm proud of who you are, proud of who you're becoming, and I'm proud that you can keep moving along. It's a very difficult climate to be working in, Yeah. and you're adapting, and you're changing, and you're helping your clients do the same, Yeah. <clears throat> and I hear you when I put my ear up to your door and listen in on your conversations. No, I'm just joking. Um, I hear how happy your clients are. Yeah. Well, I think part of living this whole on-brand thing is knowing who you are, but also being flexible and being open to changes and to personal growth and to just welcoming in other forms of how you work or how you understand things and just continuously growing as a person. Mm -hmm. So you, you live your best on-brand life and I'll live my best on-brand life and we'll continue to be great together. Okay. I also see it in your eyes and your smile. You think I'm happier? You're so much happier. It's so better much. for everyone, isn't it? It's Whoa, it's better for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on brand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mom, thanks so much for, for coming out, and maybe we'll have you again. I'm giving her a big business hand, handshake right now. <laughs>
Okay, we'll see you next time, Mom. Bye. Are you nervous? Yeah. Don't be nervous. God, just get it together. <laughs> Say something. Hello, and welcome back to the Brand Theory Podcast. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm not doing anything. You're just so cute. <laughs> Profile. She is probably loved. So you're going to have to turn that off. Yeah. Don't need me. So the money aspect of it. Like we should be saving, and I don't. I'm just trying to talk to her. Wait, I have more to say.